goes on to disputed that the goal of aspiring game devs is to make games or clout. Not sure why. There are easier ways to do it. While you might be tempted to just smash out that dream game of yours right from the get-go, there are some considerations you might want to think about first, some that might not only benefit that dream game, but also your skills and potential future career. Making side projects. Side projects are touted by many, but the benefits aren't really discussed besides better game better dev. And while this video is clearly about game development, don't worry, it does apply to other disciplines. So, why should you make side projects? A lot of people don't realise that working on side projects builds more than directly related practical skills. Dedicating time and effort to a project develops various personal skills such as, but not limited to, work ethic, determination, discipline, burnout management, and so on. For this video, we'll only talk about the first three. Work ethic can be defined as the intrinsic value that we place on something and the productivity we gain from it. It's something that could come naturally for some, but not for others. And I think it's related to a lack of investment placed in the thing or things we're doing. There's no drive, or maybe that drive has depleted. By deciding to work on something you have a genuine interest in, or attaching some intrinsic drive to it, you can find it more natural to work on things that you want to you start to build determination. Determination is, besides a phrase strong enough to bring a gamer to tears, the drive to do something even against deterrent, often born out of passion. Determination can trick you into becoming productive and seeing things to completion. Let's not pretend determination never wavers, of course it does, it's natural. Humans get bored and game devs have sudden urges for an unfinished project 200 and 64. But that's where discipline is built. Discipline! The biggest learning curve and arguably the most temperamental to build. It's when you level and train yourself to do something despite how you may feel at any one moment. You must listen to your body though, take breaks when needed, avoid burnout and know when it's time to end a project. Part of that is developing the ability to identify whether that feeling comes from your best interests or you just can't be asked. In a world where building discipline can be really hard, Having side projects can be a foundation for you to even start trying. It's not always going to be fun, unfortunately, and sometimes you genuinely need a break. It's super important that you balance everything, listen to yourself, and mitigate burnout. He says, for the 600th time. However, game dev projects help in one important area in particular. Game, de game development, the place that people go to experience the existential crisis and realisation that many disciplines go into creating even the smallest of games. Programming, tooling, game design, level design, design design, art, modelling, animation, VFX, SFX, music, marketing, PR, it's a lot. A lot of gamers don't realise there's more to game development than just programming or making assets, especially if you want things to be high quality or optimised. The same can be said for the misconception that only programmers are game devs. That's not true. Every discipline contributes to the game development process process. Therefore, they're all game developers. I don't make the rules! While creating side projects won't make you necessarily an expert in any one discipline, it is brilliant for at least experiencing them. See what they're about. Allow yourself to fail in them. It's okay. Strengthen your understanding of what they're all about and grow in them. That system wasn't flexible enough last time, so I'll do it like this this time. I didn't produce LODs in that project, so the next one, I'll add it to my asset workflow. In a previous video about level design tips, I discussed level design techniques that I had learned through my Mr. X AI project. Without that project, I never would have gained the experience from the challenges I faced. So if you're interested in those level design tips, be sure to check it out. Gradually being able to leave tutorial hell is another rewarding benefit of making side projects. Pulling something off from self-deduction is like 
gravity discovering Newton. It's amazing! Of course, that doesn't mean you won't ever need or want tutorials. The indie dev community wouldn't be nearly as vibrant or bustling as it is today without them. They make game development more accessible. Skills of self-direction apply to other areas of life too, allowing you to break down or understand concepts without strict dependence on preset solutions. It won't suddenly make you Jimmy Neutron, obviously. Not even he has a bigger forehead as you do. Bloody hell. As with any project, you become exposed to the multitude of tools at your disposal, and game development is no different. Whether it's Blender, Substance Painter, a Sprite, to name a few. As the engine is your primary tool, you'll get to know it the most, explore its feature sets, any packages or extensions available for it, and everything else. Explore multiple engines and find the one that you gel with the most, or the one that best fits your project. Remember, there are many engines outside the mainstream ones. Recent game industry events? <laughs> I've proven that it's best to explore your options when it comes to game engines. Check the strengths of them all. For example, Unreal Engine 5 is brilliant for making 3D games with industry standard built-in tools, but you might decide to go with Unity or even Godot for the needs of your project just because your project requires those features or is better suited to, to those engines. Getting to know engines is important for your greater understanding of game development, decoupling game dev concepts from the tools that you use, providing an opportunity to apply, adapt and expand what you already know. This is where watching game dev vlogs can be super useful not only for the sense of community and motivation, but for peering into experiences of others and maybe learning something that you didn't know. Not everyone comes into game development from a programming background. If you're not going solo, you probably never need to touch code in your life. Oh, the sweet innocence. Like any discipline, learning how to code can open up new avenues that you previously hadn't realized. Like engines, there are different programming languages. C Sharp, C++, Python, Java, GDScript, Rust, and so on. Then there are different paradigms. Functional, procedural, imperative, and the most commonly known, object-oriented. What are any of these? <laughs> no one knows. I just said those things to scare you! <laughs> it doesn't matter what you learn or how you learn. All that matters is that it works with the language you're using and the engine you're working with. Some engines, like Unreal, have built-in node-based code editors, which turn code into a more visual representation full of fun draggies and cool pulleys with pretty colours and common functions or utilities already built in. A different approach but still a similar way of thinking. Thanks for the technical dump, Jack, but what does that have to do with anything? Learning how to program, the mindset, technical aspects such as architecture, abstraction, interfaces, inheritance, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't just allow you to make a game. If you want it to, it can open up your future career prospects. As we've already discussed, game development can be a catalyst to many disciplines available to you, and you previously didn't think you could do. If you want it to be, game development can be a springboard into any number of interests because of the many disciplines that go into it. Side projects are the journey that you go on to try different things or push you into a specific area that more closely aligns with your interests or next project. Like Game Jams, working on a range of things may inspire you to come up with ideas or foundational mechanics you hadn't previously thought of. Game Jams are truly amazing for this, with many extremely popular indie games born from them. You might recognise a few. What you've done or learned in a previous jam or other side projects may be transferable or enable you to do things you otherwise didn't know how to do before. But what if you don't have any ideas for side projects? What if you are genuinely at a loss and don't even know where to start? Besides the random themes of game jams that are a brilliant way of making any idea and coming up with something random you maybe hadn't thought of before, Another idea is to take a mechanic that you absolutely love from another game and try and make it 
yourself. Make it unique if you want to. Try and put a unique spin on it. I've done this in my own projects, and there are even YouTube channels dedicated to exploring game mechanics this way. Like the incredible Mix and Jam, which I highly recommend. He has some incredible stuff on there. It is truly amazing. If that doesn't tickle your pickle, you could always take that dream game of yours, break it down into components, and work out how you'd make it from them. A crafting system, a farming simulator, an inventory system. It doesn't matter. Take that mechanic or system and try to make it. Make it flexible enough, and you might be able to use it in future projects. Whatever you do, Remember the most important thing, show it off. However, one of the biggest outcomes, and arguably the best, is that working on side projects, without realising it, you're creating a portfolio. Whether you're starting a new one or you're adding to an existing one, each project you make is proof of your experiences. Your projects don't need to be mind-blowing. They don't even need to be triple A quality. My most recent project, where I recreated the AI of Mr. X from Resident Evil 2, check out the video, by the way, might be seen as just an AI study. But if you step back, squint your eyes, and really, really focus, you'll see it's a portfolio piece. And to be honest, it always was. I used it to explore developing traditional gameplay mechanics and systems, sheepishly learning basic shaders, optimization techniques, and, of course, creating my very own AI behavior tree system from the ground up for the very first time. Even if the project didn't work out, or you decided to abandon it, eventually, never to see the light of day, it doesn't matter. Take what you've made and show it off. It's proof of what you've worked on. There can be a stigma about only showing off work that is considered ready, or is in a finished state, instead of equally showing off those really cool ideas that just never crossed the finish line. Obviously, the games industry is in a massive black hole at the moment, and having a portfolio isn't an any percent speedrun strat into getting a game dev job. But it's also not just about getting a job, or for anyone else for that matter. It's for you. It's proof of your unique mind, your experiences and your achievements. Little reminders of your accomplishments and how far your efforts can actually take you. To quiet that voice of self-doubt whenever starting something new. To be proud of what you have done, how far you have come, and what you are capable of. And it's for those exact reasons why you should make side projects. Oh, at least they are to me. Now remember, and this is something I'm extremely passionate about, there are no right or wrong ways in game development. There will always be a more optimal or convenient or flexible way to do things, but that doesn't mean they are the solution. If you've watched any of my other videos, which you should, you'll know that I'm a stickler for well-structured and organised code. Or at least I try. But that doesn't mean that I think that that's the thing to do, or that I constantly achieve that. Trust me, as long as the game is fun, that's all that matters. But tell me, what projects are you currently working on? It doesn't even have to be game development related. Just share with the community what tingles your Pringle. I'd love to know. Not that bit, the first bit. The first bit. The first bit. If you enjoyed the video, maybe even a little inspired, go ahead and leave a like. And if you miss me in the meantime, head on over to Twitch, where we hold ourselves to very high standards. What? What? WHAT?! If you want to go one step further in supporting the channel and the creation and content, head on over to patreon.com forward slash darkdax and pledge as much, or as little, or nothing at all. At the end of the day, I'm glad you even watched. Most of all, if you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe for more games, games dev, and all things Dark Dax. Now, if you excuse me, I'm off to go try Godot for the first time to recreate one of the best games ever made. Peggle. <laughs> I'm kidding.
I'm kidding. Yeah. It's honey pop. <laughs>